Hi, welcome back to our session on limits. In the previous video, we learned how to calculate limits by substituting the value in the function. Those are all trivial functions, trivial limit calculations, where just by substituting the value, we can arrive at the value of the limits. But in many cases, what happens is uh, substituting the value of the point at which we want to find the limit uh, gives us an indeterminate form. For example, let's consider this rational expression x cubed plus 3x square plus 2x divided by x square minus x minus 6. If we substitute x equal to minus 2 here, then we get minus 2 to the power whole cube plus 3 into minus 2 whole square plus 2 into minus 2 divided by minus 2 whole square minus of minus 2 and minus 6. When we evaluate this, the numerator becomes minus 8 plus 3 into 4 12 and minus 4 the whole thing divided by 4 minus 2 whole square is 4 minus of minus 2 is plus 2 and minus 6. Numerator actually becomes 0 and the denominator is another zero, which means this is an indeterminate form. Does it mean that limit does not exist at x as x tends to minus two? Maybe not, right? Maybe there's something else happening here. So one way of finding out whether it's there is a function with limits or not at this point x equal to minus two, what we need to do is do a factorization. Factorization is a way of reducing this and then apply limits. So let's try factorizing this uh, expression. Factorize the numerator. So there is, as you can see, there is x common across all terms in the numerator. So we take x common and then what is left is x square plus 3x plus 2, right? Likewise, in the denominator, if you see this, this is can be written as x square minus 3x plus 2x minus 6. So I'm writing this minus x as minus 3x plus 2x, which is still being minus x, right? So which, when you do a further sub factorization of the numerator, the numerator, this can again be written as x 2x plus 1x. So then this will become x plus 2 into x plus 1, the whole thing divided by. Now when we do grouping of this and take common things out, you will get an x plus 2 into x minus 3. You should brush up your factorization before you attempt any calculus. So I guess this is elementary algebra. You should be able to do the factorization. So when we factorize, this is what we get. Now we see that x plus 2 is common across numerator and denominator. So the factorization gives us x into x plus 1 and x plus 2 divided by x minus 3 into x plus 2. Like I said in the earlier, x plus 2 and x plus 2 is common so we can cancel them out in the numerator and denominator and what is left now let us apply x equal to minus 2 in this remaining expression and see what is the value when you apply that the limit evaluates to minus 2 into minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 minus 3 right this is minus 2 into minus 1 will be this will be plus 2 divided by minus 5 so the limit is minus 2 by 5 so as x tends to minus 2 this expression achieves a value of minus 2 by 5 so sometimes when you substitute you might get a indeterminate value when you get an indeterminate value check just check if you can factorize the numerator and denominator and remove common values and then calculate the limits. Let's try out a few more examples just to drive home the point. Let us see one more example of a similar nature. Here as x tends to 1 by 2, we want to find out the value of 8x cubed minus 1, 6x square minus, divided by 6x square minus 5x plus 1. Right? Here again, if we substitute like the previous method, substitute x to 1 by 2, let's see what happens. When we substitute x equal to 1 by 2, what happens is the expression becomes this and when you evaluate this the numerator becomes 1 minus 1 which is 0 divided by 6 by 4 minus 5 by 2 plus 1 right so this is equal to 0 divided by 6 by 4 is 3 by 2 plus 1 minus 5 by 2 
which will be equal to 0 by 0. Again, we get an indeterminate form. Once again, we need to see if we can find any factorize these two factors, these two expressions, the numerator and denominator, and find if there are common factors that can be cancelled. Let us do that and see how to handle this problem. So when we factorize the given numerator, numerator is nothing but 2x whole cube minus 1. So this is of the form a cube minus b cube, right? So it is a minus b, which is here, and a square, which is 4x square, ab, which is 2 into x, into 1 plus b that is b square which is this and the numerator denominator can be split as 6x square can be split as 2x minus 2x and minus 3x right so if we do that then we get 2x minus 1 into 3x minus 1 so you should brush up your factorization so again we see here 2x minus 1 is common between the two once we cancel it once we cancel the common factors, what is left is 4x squared plus 2x plus 1 by 3x minus 1. In this, let us substitute half. Now you know they are all positive terms. We should not get any 0 by 0 form. Let us see what happens when we substitute. So this becomes 4 into 1 by 2 whole square plus 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1. The whole thing divided by... 3 by 2 minus 1. So 3 into 1 by 2, 3 by 2, right? So this evaluates to, this is 1 by 4 into 4 is 1, 2 into 1 by 2 is another 1, and there is 1, so plus 1. And the denominators 3, 1 by 2 minus 1 is a 1 by 2, which is equal to 3 into 2, which is equal to 6, which is the value that this function attains when x tends to half. Let's take one more example just to ground the concept. In this example, we don't have any numerator, but we have two fractions, right? So if we substitute x equal to 2 here, this whole value becomes 0, x minus 2 becomes 0, so it's 1 by 0, which is infinity, and this x minus 2 again becomes 0, again it becomes 1 by 0, which is infinity, so infinity minus infinity. Getting an infinity. Infinity function reaching infinity as a limit when uh, the x reaches another value uh, is applicable but sometimes we would like to be sure so we should do a simplification and check whether it really reaches infinity so how do we simplify it's a fractional thing so we can take a common factor and see how does this simplify get simplified so if we take the lcm lcm for the above function would be x into x minus 2 whole square into x minus 1. So the common factor here is x minus 1 comes in numerator and x minus 2 into x goes into the numerator here. So this is what we get. Further simplification of this expression gives us minus 1 into x square minus 3x plus 1 x into x minus 2 whole square into x minus 1. Now simplification is uh, fairly straightforward. Basically if you multiply this you get this will be equal to x minus 1 minus x square plus 2x. So this whole thing becomes and the numer denominator remains same. So x into x minus 2 whole square into x minus 1. So if you club all the terms and take minus 1 common, then this is what we get. right? In this, if you look at it in the denominator, we still have an x minus 2 term. So if we substitute x equal to 2 here, this whole thing becomes 0, which means the limit will continue to be 1 by 0, which is infinity. Hence, the limit in this case is infinity. Many a times, just a look at this expression will tell you that it's going to go to infinity. There's another interesting fact that we need to remember, learn from this example, is that this is, we have two separate rational expressions, right? and we are finding a limit. So this here we are doing a limit of a sum of two expressions or a difference of two expressions. What we find is individually each function is going to a limit of infinity and hence when you find the limit of the sum of expressions it is still ending up as a infinity as the same value. So this is a important identity in limits. So the identity says if we find the limit of sum of two functions f of x and g of x 
it will be same as finding the limits first and then adding the limits right so in this case in the example that we considered 1 by x into x minus 2 whole square is f of x and 1 by x minus 2 into x minus 1 is g of x what we did was calculate the limit of the sum of the functions but we know from here individually f of x tends to infinity when x tends to 2 and g of x tends to infinity when x tends to 2 so individually f of x and g of x are also infinity hence limit of sum of functions is same as sum of the limits this is a very important identity which we use implicitly so when we find when we are given a sum of functions and we are asked to find limits we can always find the individual limits and add them up at the end we will be leaving you with a few examples that you can try out and figure out understand the concepts better so i'm going to give you leave you with three problems please try it out if it doesn't work you can always see the solution in the next video here is a set of three problems where you you are, you are to use the limit by factorization and find the limit as x tends to 1 for all these three fractional expressions rational expressions um, in each of these cases the limit tends to 0 minus 1 and infinity so this is this all these problems are very similar to the problems that we have seen in the video so far so apply this concept try out these problems and see how it works in case you need help with these uh, solutions watch the next video where we'll work out each one of these limits and find out how the values are arrived at thank you